Hey guys and welcome back to another Tech Tutorial Tuesday. Many people will tell you not to run your Home Assistant on an SD card these days, including myself having mentioned it a number of times on this channel, instead urging you to move to an SSD instead. But I've never actually shown you how to install Home Assistant on the Raspberry Pi with an SSD before. There's also been a change to the way that Home Assistant is installed on Raspberry Pis in general just recently also, so I thought we could cross a couple of those items off of our list and cover all of those in this one video. So today we're going to cover how to install Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi with an SSD and also how to migrate your old installation if you have one over to your new installation. Make sure to give this video a like and get subscribed if you aren't already and if you want your question answered in next week's video then make sure to leave it in the comments down below. All right, let's just get into it. First, we need to talk about the hardware requirements. And as always, I will have affiliate links to everything I'm going to speak about in the description down below. You are obviously going to need a Raspberry Pi for this video. And for this video, I'm going to be using a Raspberry Pi 4. It is possible to do this on a 3B, but the process for booting an SSD is slightly different, which I'm not covering here. And I would probably recommend upgrading at this point anyways. You're also going to need an SD card just to make one small change after which it is not required. So you can just use any spare SD card that you may have lying around. You'll also need your SSD and in terms of which one you should choose I would probably just go for the cheapest brand name one that you've heard of before. There is no need for a super high speed or high capacity for this application since it's very unlikely to be utilized fully. So I would go for brand names such as Samsung or Crucial or Kingston. Any of those brands have been around for a long time. I would just choose the cheapest and lowest capacity version that you can find. Now you do have two different form factors that you will need to choose from. A normal two and a half inch SATA based SSD or an M.2 SSDs which come in those little uh, gumstick form factors. I don't want to turn this into an hour long conversation about SSDs because I could talk about SSDs all day long but both form factors will work and both will be connected to a USB adapter anyways. If you choose an M.2 drive I would avoid choosing an NVMe drive. The extra cost and speed just isn't worth it really in my opinion but your mileage may vary again on that one. Again I'll have links to all the different recommendations that I would make in the description down below. Finally, we need to talk about USB adapters because that is how our SSD is going to plug into our Pi. Our Pi doesn't have a native M.2 port and it certainly doesn't have a native SATA port. So a USB adapter is what we're going to use to connect our SSD. The adapter that you will need will depend on which SSD type you have chosen, so SATA or M.2. And you'll need to be careful which adapter you choose because not all adapters are compatible with the Pi, at least from what I can tell. There are a lot of adapters that don't seem to work. If you chose a 2.5 inch SATA SSD, then you will need to choose a SATA to USB adapter. And if you chose an M.2 drive, then you'll need an M.2 to USB adapter. Even within the M.2 form factor, there are different sizes, so just make sure to check your compatibility. Oh, also, finally, finally, if you want to keep everything neat and tidy and enclosed, then there are some Raspberry Pi 4 cases that have built-in USB adapters, and they also have space inside for an SSD. I really like the Argon 1 case for the Pi 4, which takes an M.2 SSD. It may seem a little bit pricier on the surface, but if you take into consideration that you're getting a really nice looking case with a fan and a space inside for an SSD, plus an M.2 USB adapter, then it kind of starts to make sense. So that is definitely worth considering if you want to go down that route. Let's get started with the process and we are going to be starting with the migration first. If you're starting with a brand new install, then I'll leave a timestamp down below that you can jump ahead to and join us at that point. First thing you're gonna to want to do is to take a backup of your existing installation using Home Assistant snapshots. Now this does assume that you're using Home Assistant OS already, which if you have a Pi, then you probably already are. But if you're one of those people who likes to live on the wild side of life, then you can check out this video up here for how to do a manual backup. 
on your existing installation, head over to Supervisor and then Snapshots and take a snapshot. Either a full snapshot or a partial snapshot and exclude anything you don't want to take with you. This process can take quite a bit of time to complete depending on your hardware and install size. Once you're done, you're gonna to want to download this snapshot to your computer so that we can use it to restore later. Once you've done that, you can now shut down your original installation and remove the SD card and set it aside for now. I would recommend keeping your SD card safe until everything is up and working and you're happy it's all functioning correctly. Now it's time to prep the new install on the SSD. So connect your SSD to the USB adapter and plug it in to your computer. Then click on the link in the description and download Raspberry Pi Imager. Install it and then open it. I'm using Windows here since that's what most of you guys use, but Raspberry Pi Imager is available on macOS and Linux and the process is the exact same. Scroll down and click on where it says Other Specific Purpose OS and select Home Assistant from the list. Then using the storage button, select your SSD. Make sure to select the right disk here as this will be completely wiped clean. Then hit the right button to start the process. Let the process complete, which doesn't take long at all, and then you can remove the disk from your computer. At this point, we are getting close, but if we tried to plug this drive into our Raspberry Pi and boot it, chances are nothing would happen. And that's because we need to change the bootloader of the Pi to tell it to boot from USB instead of SD card. Some of you may already have updated firmware on your Pi to do this, but there is no harm in doing it again, and it just takes a couple of seconds anyways, so it's worth doing. We're gonna be using a temporary SD card here in order to update the boot order, and I would recommend using a spare SD card here and not the one from your old installation if you're doing a migration. Insert the SD card into your computer and using Raspberry Pi Imager once again, select the MISC Utility Images option from the menu. Then select Bootloader and select USB Boot. What this will do is change the boot order on the Raspberry Pi to boot from USB first and if it can't find one then it will try to boot the SD card. Select your SD card from the storage and then hit the flash button and again this process will just take literally a couple of seconds to complete. Take the SD card from your computer and insert it into your Pi and switch the power on. After roughly 10 seconds the green LED will blink with a continuous pattern and if you have a display connected then you will get a green display. This means that the process was successful and the bootloader has been changed and you can now switch off the power to the Pi and remove the SD card. Finally, you can then plug in your SSD to the Pi and switch on the power for the final time. I'd also highly recommend connecting an Ethernet cable at this point too, if you have one, and I would strongly advise you to keep it connected to Ethernet wherever possible. However, if you do need to use Wi-Fi, then you'll need to briefly connect a keyboard and a display to your Pi to configure it with a couple of commands. First, log in using root as the username with no password. Then use the command nm CLI device Wi Fi list to list all Wi Fi SSIDs. Then again, use the following NMCLI command to join your Wi Fi. When you enter this, it will then prompt you for the Wi Fi password. Now, both Ethernet and Wi Fi users should now be at the same point, and now we can simply log into the web UI of Home Assistant and start configuring things. This is done by entering homeassistant.local colon 8123 in your browser, which should load up the web UI. If this doesn't work, then you'll need to check your router for the IP address of your Pi and use that instead, making sure to always use port 8123 at the end. Once you've managed to get into the web UI, you may see a page saying that Home Assistant is loading, or you may already be at the setup screen. If you are at the loading screen, then don't worry. Home Assistant is just downloading all the latest information, and this can take a bit of time depending on your internet speed. Once you have the setup screen, then if this is a brand new installation you're doing, then you are done. You're free to go through the setup process and configure this with your personal information and you can stop watching this video. But if you're doing a migration or you just feel like helping me out with the almighty YouTube algorithm, then keep watching. You did subscribe, right?
Again, just to clarify, this part is for migration users only. At the setup screen, don't spend any time configuring anything here, just enter any old information. You could use the snapshots restore button here if you want, but I prefer to do it from the supervisor menu. Once you've went through the setup process, head straight to the supervisor menu and then go to system and you'll want to check what your IP address is. If the IP address is the same as your old install, then you are good to go. If it is different, then I would suggest using the option here to change it to the same as what your old installation was. This will make sure that any integrations that were dependent on your old IP address will continue to work. Then head back to the snapshots tab and hit the three dots in the top right hand corner and then upload snapshot. Select the snapshot that you downloaded earlier and wait for it to upload. At which point you can select the snapshot and hit restore everything. Thing. This will kick off the restore process and again this can take a significant amount of time depending on the size of your original install. Although it should be much quicker than before since you are running on a shiny new SSD. Once the snapshot is restored, Home Assistant will briefly go offline and come back on. At which point you can now log in with your credentials, verify everything is there and working, and you are done. Remember if your installation had HTTPS enabled on it previously, then you'll need to make sure to update your URL to use HTTPS after restoring the snapshot. And that is about it. You should now be up and running with your new fast SSD and you can enjoy some new found speed, but also reliability. Some further videos you may want to check out now that you are running an SSD is the MariaDB video, which tells you how to change the default database type from SQLite to MariaDB, which can also help with performance. And you can also check out the InfluxDB and Grafana video, which is nice for long-term data retention and also analytics. But that is about all the time we have for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it, hopefully it was useful, and hopefully you have now been able to migrate your installation from an SD card to an SSD. If you want to support the channel, you can do so by becoming a patron on Patreon, and your support allows me to keep on making these videos. Thank you to all my current Patreon supporters, your support is very much appreciate it. Make sure to drop this video a like and get subscribed and I'll see you in the next video. Shoo.